Beloved, I'm Pastor Afe Lumo Sheson, the host of Living by Grace. I believe one of the greatest gifts that the Lord has given us is the gift of grace. For with the grace of God, God has given us in Christ. Without grace, the life that we have in Christ will not be meaningful. But with grace, we will discover according to the promise of God that the life we have in Christ is a beautiful life powerful life, blessed life, enviable and commendable, but we need grace. And that's why I'm grateful to God that you, my listener, is joining me today and several other members of the family of grace all over the world for today's broadcast. I assure you, you will be engraced as you listen. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Amen. Welcome back. Today, by the grace of God, we will be looking at Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25. Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 25. We may even extend it to 26. For there is a good news the Lord will want me to share with somebody that has been waiting. So the topic of our discussion today shall be, there is a good news for you. There is a good news for you. Well, let's pray before we go into what the Lord has for us. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your answers to our prayers. We are here today because you have kept us in your faithfulness. We thank you for the grace we've got in the past and the grace we're about to get now. Accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. There is good news for you. I know you've been waiting to hear a good news for one area of life or the other. And the Lord has sent me to you this morning to tell you there is the good news you've been waiting for. Let's look at our scriptures. Matthew chapter, I mean Mark chapter 8 from verse 23. From verse 22. And he came to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Verse 6. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to anyone in the town. Let me quickly say something. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as it is written, that Jesus sent this man home to go and break the good news. When you return back to your home today, you will have a good news to share with them. Because I'm sure everybody in your life is aware of this, your challenge. And they all have been looking up and looking forward to the day that this, your challenge, will be turned around. Well, today is the day in the name of Jesus Christ. For according to this word of the Lord, Jesus sent that man back. You are going back to your parents with the good news. You are going back to your spouse. You are going back to your children. You are going back to your colleagues. You are going back to your business with good news in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I dare to declare by faith that within the next 24 hours after you have had this message, your good news, your reasons for rejoicing will have come forth in Jesus' name. You will come out of that bed of affliction. You will have that breakthrough. You will pay that bills. You will complete that project. Helpers of destiny will come your way. You will meet your life partner in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever it is, that you have been waiting on the Lord for. This day I announce to you, the Lord will come true for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You know the story, Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 to 26. We just read. The young man came to Jesus. He had no eyes. He was born without one. The Bible said the first thing was that he made it to Jesus. Now, 
after he made it to Jesus, the Bible says Jesus too came and walked him away from where the crowd is. Take note of that. Step one, he, the blind man, made it to Jesus. Step two, the Lord walked him away from the crowd. The third point was he asked him, what do you see? And he said, I see men like trees. So the miracle of that guy had started, but it was not completed. And so the Lord touched him a second time. That's step four. He repeats and asks him, what do you see? Then he said, he saw men as men. And then the Lord, step five, charged him to go home and break the news to his people. You know, there are a few things we can learn from these five steps that move this man from the place of lack to the place of abundance and gave him a good news. And that's what I want you to know. Concerning the principles of the Spirit, they are working anywhere. So if you are listening to me as far away as the ends of the heart, these five principles I want to share with you works because they are spiritual principles. Step number one, for you to have a good news over that matter, walk up to the Lord. The meaning of that is if you have not given your life to Christ, please do. Because Jesus said it, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes into the kingdom of God where there is reasons for rejoicing except by him. Then he also said again in the book of Acts, he said, there is no other name under heaven by which anyone can be saved apart from the name of Jesus. That man that was born without eyes, he walked up to Jesus. And that was how he got his miracle. As you surrender your life to Jesus, as your first step, then you have embarked on the journey of turning a bad situation to a glorious one. And that shall be your portion in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, Jesus was speaking again by the prophet. He said, Arise! For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Meaning, the light and glory is waiting for you to, only to arise. And in this context, arise with me, come to Jesus, give your life to Jesus. Now, if you've given your life to Jesus, but you are backslidden, then the arise me, repent and return to the Lord. So step one, find your way back to the Lord. Step two was that Jesus removed that man from the crowd. The meaning of that is, see, when you turn your life over to the Lord, the companies and the ways of the world that you are associating with, you need to come away from them. You need to come away from them. Certain associations, certain relationships, certain indulgences, certain ex entertainments that you indulge in, you have to let them go. You know, in the book of Genesis chapter 12, when God called Abraham, he told him to leave everything behind. And that's always the call of God. We are called to follow Jesus and give up the world. Because no man can serve two masters. You cannot be in the boat of Noah and be in the boat of the world. So Jesus removed him from the crowd. You need to step away from all those ways that are sinful. Your ungodly entertainment, your ungodly friends. Psalm 1 reminds, I'm reminded of Psalm 1 that says, The man that God blesses, He's the man that does not sit in the seat of the scornful, does not stand in the ways of the sinner, and does not walk in the, in the, in the path of the, of the scornful. So you need to be separate. That's step two. The third step, after you have walked up to the Lord, and because of him, you stepped away from your righteous environment. Step three. The Bible said Jesus laid his hands upon his eyes. When you go to the Lord, you need to let him know the point where it is hurting you. 
It will amaze you that there are people that go to the Lord and they are hiding. He knows you. There is nothing hidden from the Lord. You go to the Lord and you lay it bare. Tell him. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Matthew 11 28, he said, come. All you that labor and are heavy laden. He knows where you are laboring. He knows where the shoe is pinching you. So when you go to the Lord, it is not the time to begin to tell lies or pretend. No. It's a time to lay it bare. So it laid hands on the man's point of need. And you ask the Lord to help you. Open your mouth and ask. That reminds me of Luke chapter 17. The story of the woman that was going to the unjust judge. The Bible said the woman kept going to the judge. Asking him for the same thing. So you need to go to the Lord and ask him for help. Blind Bartimaeus cried. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Two blind guys came to Jesus. And Jesus asked them, what do you want me to do for you? They opened their mouth and they said that we might receive our sight. They were specific and they were honest about their need. So step number three, you go to the Lord and ask him for help. I hope you will not feel too big to ask the Lord for help. I hope pride has not gone to the point in your life. We are to openly ask the Lord for help. It's a difficult thing for you. I want you to know that he made you. He loves you. And he knows where you are hurting. He only asks you to come. So, step number three, ask the Lord for help in the area where you need help. The fourth step was that the man opened up and gave the Lord a report of the progress he was making. You see, thanksgiving and gratitude for what you have is the seed for the more that you want. At least the guy could see only that he was not seeing clearly. That is a progress compared to where he was coming from. No wonder the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Then in the book of Revelation chapter 3, the Bible says, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. Testimony is powerful. Thanking God for what he has done. He's the seed for receiving more of what God has promised. The Bible said he opened his mouth and said, I see. Only that I'm yet to see fully. I see men as three. Be grateful for the little act of mercies. The songwriter says, mercy drop, I see. But for the showers, I pray. So acknowledge the drops of mercy and that will qualify you for the showers of blessing. Step number four. The man was appreciative of little progress. And you see, when a man is appreciative of progress, that tells you that that man is still kept in the presence of God. See, thanks given, Psalm 100 verse 4, he says, we enter his gate with praise, we enter his court with thanksgiving. I mean, we enter his gate with thanksgiving, we enter his court with praise. See, as long as a man is grateful, that man is in the presence of God. And whatever God has begun, according to the word, that says when God begins a good thing, he will be faithful to complete it. So when you stand in the place of gratitude, yeah, you are standing in God's presence. And whatever good thing the Lord has started in your life, you stand the chance of seeing the Lord complete it. Be grateful. Be grateful. Don't give up. The fact that you have not got there does not cover the fact that God has moved you forward. Be grateful for your forward movement. And as you be grateful, then you will be progressive more and more in the name of Jesus Christ. Then the last step, which is where we are going to stop, was that the man was instructed to take the good news home. And that instruction came after the Lord touched him a second time. See, there is a second touch that is coming upon you. Hence, the Lord has sent me to you. 
if you remain in the law, step one, and you remain away from the world, step two, and you remain in the place of God's presence, step three, and you are grateful in the presence of the Lord, step four, beloved, the second touch is coming upon you. That's the step five. He got the second touch, the touch of completion. Oh, I have this strong urge in my spirit to say to somebody, that which God has started in your life, welcome to the day and the week of his completion in Jesus' name. Before I see you again next Wednesday, the Lord will have completed this work in your life in Jesus' name. And then he got his second touch. I call it the touch of completion of the work of grace. The touch of perfection of what God has started. The touch of celebration. The touch of rejoicing. The touch of testimony. And when he got the second touch, his miracle was completed. In the name of Jesus Christ, what God has started for you is going to be completed this week. Oh, I believe God for that. Yes, this week the Lord will complete it. This month the Lord will complete it. This quarter the Lord will complete it. He has started it long ago. It seems draggy. But the reason why God has given me this message is because he's ready to complete it. Let's go over the steps again before I close. Number one, to have good news over any aspect of your life, irrespective of where you are hearing me from, and irrespective of the situation, step number one, turn to Jesus. Whether as a new convert or in repentance if you are backslidden. When you have turned to Jesus, step number two, tell him about the challenge you are having. Step number three, the Lord will lay hands upon you, your eyes will open, and then step number four, you'll be grateful. Your gratitude will necessitate a second touch, the touch of completion. And then the Lord told him, now you can go home with your good news, for people are waiting for you. The Bible said the earnest expectation of creation, and that includes our loved one, they are waiting to see the manifestation of God in our lives. You will not disappoint your loved ones. Everyone that is waiting for you to succeed, they will not be disappointed. Everyone that is waiting for you to become great, they will not be disappointed. Everyone that is waiting for you to become a significant figure in your generation, they will not be disappointed. I'm waiting to hear your testimony and I will not be disappointed. Your family is, your spouse are, your spouse is, your children are, your colleagues are, your country is, your organization is, they will not be disappointed. That is the good news I brought to you. That God wants to give you good news. Until I see you next Wednesday, make sure you keep living under the atmosphere of grace. God bless you. Now, if you look at the screen, you will see our information. You can reach us anytime with your testimony, with your questions, and with your prayer requests. We are ready to respond. God bless you. Thank you for listening.